I, I, I think there are issues with it that need to be addressed before it can go out. Thankfully, they're addressing these, and I've arranged with Lulzbot to send this one back to their engineering department to investigate and to get a new production model here. Ah, uh, you remember that? That was that pre-production TAS-6 I reviewed. I've got a production level TAS-6 now. I've put it through its paces. Let's find out what I think about it. You ready? Go. So here we are. We're in front of my filament wall, and this is the TAS-6. This is not the pre-production unit. This is the unit they sent me in replacement of the pre-production unit. I assembled it. Uh, I think you saw it on video, and then once I set it up, I just started printing, and I remember saying I wasn't going to review it until I ran out of filament, and I'm close. I've got one row left, and it's 2.85 3-millimeter filament, so I'm going to call it good, and we're going to finish up the review of this machine. Before we get started on the review, let's, let's give an overview of this machine. I know I had it on the previous review, but we might as well do it here. So it's, it's got a build area of 280 by 280 by 250 on the Z. It takes 2.85 or 3 millimeter filament. It feeds it through this tube into this direct drive system right here, and it shoves the filament down into a hexagon hot end and spits it out of a 0.5 millimeter nozzle as it prints on this PEI bed. It has an auto leveling system where the nozzle touches down on four metal washers in the corner to establish a plane, and then it uses that plane to print correctly. Well, since this is a follow-up to a review, really, we're just here to verify that it works like the previous version does in the positives and that the negatives were taken care of. From the previous review, I figured there were four things that I needed to verify. There was the loose belts on the y-axis. There was the binding on the coupler here on one of the threaded rods. There was the Z uh, artifacts in the models that I was getting. And there was one more thing. It was the extruder assembly being loose in the carriage itself. All right, so for the y-axis, uh, belts are tight, or at the correct tightness, I should say, right out of the gate. So there's no problems there. In the use of this machine, I was able to print things that went to nearly the top of the Z height, and I got no binding on either coupler on the, on the rods here. So that's taken care of. The Z-banding issue we'll get to when we talk about the models. Of the things I printed, you, you see them before you, and let's go over them. First, uh, <laughs> I did want to print a coin sorter, and it, it, this, this one right here. Originally, I tried this one, and I believe I made a giant mistake because this is a coin sorter that would go in a mechanical like soda pop machine or something. So it doesn't actually sort in the way that I thought it would. Plus, uh, I just, I, I upped the support for some unknown reason and it's just a, a bajillion amount of support on the back. And so the support isn't coming off unless I go to town with some pliers. I'm just not going to worry about it, but it did a good job in printing that. Here is the actual coin sorter that I printed. And I showed this off in a previous video. It comes apart, puts it back together, and it takes coins. And it seems to work okay. I did print one of the pangolins for uh, World Pangolin Day, and it, it printed just fine as well. The only issue with the pangolin was that the front feet, the ankle joints, were fused together. Um, it's, otherwise, it's a, it's a great little model, but it just can't, it just can't bend its feet like this. Of course, I printed my Maker Coin. Yeah, 3D printing nerd. And it's huge. This is probably the biggest version of my Maker Coin that I printed. The filament did a great job. The printer did a great job. I'm going to consider this a good, good print. I did test out Spiral Vase Mode and Simplify 3D, and I printed this rocket. And it's... It's great. The printer did a phenomenal job. There's no banding in the Z-axis. There's no... It, it's just clean. It's super duper clean. In fact, I used both Cura and Simplify 3D with this machine to verify that it worked, and it worked great using both slicers. Oh, and finally, from the Polymaker Polylite PLA, I wanted to show you some of these. These are 50 by 50 by 5 squares that I'm going to use to test my uh, friction welding 
I did a video on friction welding and I was gonna further test it. So I used the Lowell's bot to print these squares that I'm gonna weld together via various methods. These are all arranged in a four by four grid on the bed, auto spaced by Simplify 3D. And they were all printed at the same time. And each one of these squares I measured with calipers is within spec on X, Y, and it's nearly perfect on the Z on every single square. And there's 16 of them placed throughout the bread. <laughs> throughout the bread. There's 16 of them on the bed and they all printed nearly perfect, if not perfect. Finally for prints, I thought let's Let's throw another material in there. And so I found my roll of chroma strands in of 1800. It is a co-polyester filament and it wasn't properly stored. I don't know what proper storage is for this filament, but I just grabbed it from the filament wall. I loaded it up and I started to print. The first print I did was this screaming pyramid. And in the first video I did about this TAS machine right here, I did say that it printed this better. And sure enough, it did. I did print Plunderbus Pete. I love this little model. So this guy, he's a seafaring captain and in Chroma Strand in of 1800, it looks good. Uh, the, especially on the cape, there was no Z banding in the cape. Uh, and finally with the Chroma Strand, I did start to print a lot of these 3D kit bash models. And these are the ones that you use to kind of test the features of your printer. I did have a failure on a couple of these models. Uh, some of these are supposed to have motion or uh, the ability to move and this one was fused and so the claw, it broke off. So we're not even gonna worry about that. I did however get this one where you're supposed to assemble it and that one didn't hold together as well as I wanted but the rest of the models turned out great. And the most important thing was I was looking for the sidewalls. I was looking for Z artifacting and banding, which is what I was getting in the previous version. And none of the 3D kit bash test models showed that off. They all look great. And they were using the same material that I was using in the other version of this printer. In fact, the same spool, <laughs> the exact same spool. The last one I'm going to show you before I give you my final thoughts is this model. You may know this as the twisty vases. Devin over at Make Anything designed these big twisty containers and they're just fun to play with. I printed these both on the Lowell's Bot Taz 6 here. The blue one of course is in the Polymaker Polylite PLA. The black one is in the Matter Hackers Black PLA. And uh, they work pretty good. I could really do that all day. All right, so we've we've checked the y-axis belts and they're good. There's no binding in the couplers. I showed you a bunch of models and there were no Z artifacts whatsoever. The last thing to check was this, the extruder assembly. And I was able to wiggle this around quite a bit. And as you can see, it's not moving like the previous one does. It's in there really well. So the four issues that I had with the pre-production model have all been taken care of. Thanks, Lil's bot. Well, at this point, then this machine is, is ready for my final thoughts. And my final thoughts are, are buy this, buy this machine. This is a wonderful 3D printer. It comes from a great company that gave great support, both in email and over the phone. I was able to print anything I wanted. It has a giant build area. The nozzle and the print bed get up to temperatures that allow it to print nearly anything. It takes standard G code and you can use any slicer to create it. It's just, it's a workhorse, this thing, prints like a dream and I, I'm failing to find things to complain about it. Uh, let's see, the UI is old and antiquated and they could update it if they really wanted to. Uh, here we go. The print bed power cable and data cable and whatnot sometimes slip out of the little holder right here and you just have to push it back in. That's it. That's all I could really complain about this machine. I absolutely love it. So with these words, I'm gonna recommend you buy this machine. And this was just a loaner from Lowell's Bot. I'm supposed to send it back. But Lowell's Bot, if you wanna leave it with me, I will treat it really, really well. Well, there we go, that's it. Finally, after all this time, my review of the Lowell's Bot Taz 6 is done. I highly recommend this machine. It's one of the best printers I've ever used. If you're in the market for a printer like this, I highly suggest you buy it. And if you do wanna buy it, 
I do have links down in the description that will let you buy this machine. And if you do, I get a few Scooby snacks if you go through those links. So thanks a lot. All right, well, with that said, we're done. Hey, a big thanks to everybody who watches this review. I really appreciate it. Recommend it to people if you think they're in the market for a printer like this. Lots of other reviews from trusted individuals are out there on this machine as well. If you don't take my word for it, please go to YouTube, search for TAS6 Reviews, and watch the others. And finally, a big, huge thanks to my patrons who support me at patreon.com. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to hug each other more, because I love you guys. As always, high five.